Abigail finished her note about the rise of anti-Semitism that we are seeing in Europe. And right now, we are seeing a very particular form of anti-Semitism that's rising in Europe. And most of it is coming from political Islam. And uh, I'm not sure if you follow the news of what's happening in Europe lately, but there is um, a bit of a migrant crisis, as it's being called. Um, I'm afraid it's not accidental. Several years ago, the Minister for um, Immigration into, in, into the European Union had lamented that despite Schengen zone without borders, where people can travel without a passport within the EU zones, this did not manage to erase national identities of European nation states. And that was a big problem. And the proposed solution for this was mass immigration from the third world to dilute the national identity of the nation states within Europe. This was then followed this last year by Angela Merkel in Germany calling for migrants from uh, what, to refu war refugees from Syria to please come to Germany, we will accept everyone. Sweden invited them and Angela Merkel, invite, Angela Merkel had invited them. However, most of the people who are coming to Europe to, uh, are not coming to escape war in Syria. Most of them are coming from Africa and the Middle East and Pakistan and Afghanistan. They are destroying their documentation and are pretend everybody now is a Syrian refugee. And the problem with this, in, this group of people is that it is not simply people who behave the way traditional refugees behave. I was a refugee. I went through the United Nations uh, refugee camp system. I know exactly how it worked. We were happy to receive help and people were happy to help us. That's why so many Europeans had originally come out with signs, refugees will come, because they expected that these were people in need looking for a new home in a good society. But this is not what this was. This is called, this migration is what is called a hijra. And that is an Islamic concept where people move to non-Muslim lands in order to spread Islam. These people believe that their political religious system is superior to all others and that it is their duty to impose it on those who believe in it as well as those who do not believe in it. And therefore, these refugees are extremely, extremely demanding and um, they expect everything to be given to them and they expect to be served by the population, the indigenous population of Europe. People bring them food and they throw it on the ground. This is not good enough to feed to a woman. Yes, that was said. You know, this is good food that people are giving them. Or as they're walking, you know, marching through Europe, they'll come in the evening, it's getting cold, people bring them warm blankets, warm coats, stuff for their kids. Well, in the morning, they get up, they want to move on, they throw everything into ditches and move on, and the next city they arrive at and in the evening, they demand blankets and coats and so on. These are not people who are behaving as this. So one journalist had actually asked one of the migrants, well, you've come here to Sweden and you live on, the, uh, on, uh, on these people's money. How can you justify behaving so rudely to them when it's their money that's supporting you? And he said, this is not their money, it's Allah's money. All of this money, it's Allah's money and it should go to us Muslims. And that is the attitude that these migrants are bringing with them. And because so many of them lack identity papers, the regular justice system is having difficulty dealing with them. If they arrest a migrant and they bring him to court for assaulting someone or for breaking into a house and stealing what, whatever they can find and destroying the rest, which is increasingly happening, they cannot prove the person's identity and therefore the charges cannot stick there is no way to convince them. So the rule of law is breaking down in Europe and people are becoming afraid, very afraid. In Austria, the long gun sales have gone through the roof and it's driven mostly by women who are afraid for their lives. They're afraid that they will be raped and so they are buying guns to protect themselves and their children. 
because they see that the security apparatus, the police and the army and the border guard, they are incapable of upholding the rule of law. Sweden has now admitted that they have 53 no-go zones where police are afraid to go to, where ambulance systems don't work. There is only Sharia law. There is no way for regular citizens to be equal with each other in the eyes of the law. And this is necessarily frightening people. And people, yes, people are getting angry, but they are getting as angry at the invaders as they are at their own governments. And what is even scarier is that the governments, instead of saying, OK, we have to deal with this, are turning against the people themselves and attempting to suppress all dissent against this migration wave. Unless you have been following the news coming out of Europe um, very closely, you probably aren't aware of a term called the Visegrad group. This is the term applied to a block of four countries geopolitically, Hungary, Slovakia, Poland, and the Czech Republic. But philosophically, Eastern Germany belongs in that group as well. These countries had lived under a totalitarian invasion yoke. And within living memory, people there understand what an invasion and occupation is. And therefore, these countries are resisting, not just on the popular, po po not just the people, but also on the governmental level against this migration. Angela Merkel had invited the migrants in and now she's telling, well, we have too many, every country has to take their fair share, but not every country invited them. And these are the only four that have the pol political memory to re attempt to resist migration um, on, 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 a, uh, on a political level. Now, in the other countries, and this started in, 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 in Eastern Germany, in Dresden, there is a movement called the Pegida movement, which is a German acronym for patriotic Europeans for, um, for European values. And they are marked in right-wing extremists, horrible people, they're the new fascists, they're racist, they're all... Well, just to show you what kind of people Pegida is, I have taken this from Pegida Denmark's website. It's about us, who we are and what we stand for. And full disclosure, I, I help them a little with the English, but the ideas are theirs. And if you permit me, I'd like to read it to you to let me know what you think of these horrible fascist right-wing extremists. We are individual citizens who wish to live in peace in our countries, under the rule of law, and in the spirit of the Magna Carta, respecting constitutions which guarantee our inalienable human rights to life and liberty. We cherish, cherish our most fundamental right to life and demand that governments live up to their obligation to protect it by applying the rule of law equally to everyone, regardless of gender, race, or any other consideration. We recognize that in order to maintain our rights, we must, first and foremost, defend our right to unfettered freedom of speech. Without it, there are no peaceful means to defend our other fundamental human rights. As such, we insist on our right to criticize governments, government policies, and politicians. As such, we insist on our right to criticize ideologies and philosophies and those who promote, espouse and promote them. As such, we insist on our right to criticize religious beliefs, religious figures, and religious practices. As such, we insist on our right to criticize cultures and cultural practices. These are not simply our rights. These are the duties of every citizen. And that, my dear friends, is what qualifies as right-wing extremism in Europe today.